Okay, well, small turnout today, but I've got the big room, so that's good. A um, couple of familiar faces, Jonathan, I think, from Academy last year, who might have seen some of these slides, but it, I'll try and make it a little bit more Debian specific uh, rather than KDE specific. Um, and potentially KDE is still a bit of a dirty word in Debian, although I thought we'd got over that a few years ago, um, but we'll, we'll see how we go. A uh, little bit about myself, I've been using Debian for 10, probably 12 years. Um, I've been a Debian developer since, since 2000 um, and, and I, I guess I've been doing a, a number of roles within, within Debian um, on the package maintenance side. I've worked in a couple of teams um, and my teams are up there on the screen but I've also worked as a sort of a singleton uh, package maintainer and uh, still maintain a couple of single packages. So really what this talk is about t today is, is what's team maintenance about. Uh, what are some of the issues I've seen with team maintenance? What are some of the issues that Debian's going through when we go to this new model of team maintenance? Um, and I'll try and sort of pull out some of the things that I like and some of the things that are working really well, uh, some of the things that aren't working very well at all, and, um, and, and try and pull out some, some, some case studies if I can, um, using some bits and pieces. So I'll go through, go through my, the, the portfolio of packages that I look after, as it were. Uh, the KDE Extras team is, is really sort of an adjunct to the, the, the main uh, Debian uh, QT uh, KDE maintainers and um, we look after the other packages, um, not the core packages, I think I've lost the microphone, uh, not the core packages. Um, so KDE base, KDE network, uh, all of those, um, the, the extras team don't look after that. We, we tend to look after a whole bunch of uh, singleton applications, but, but we try and do that in a common framework. Um, there are some other KDE applications. Um, Amarok um, works sort of outside the Alioth teams. Um, and then some other packages like Gwenview are just, just maintained by singleton uh, package maintainers. And, and I guess we're, we're all adopting slightly different approaches. And um, I think Martin talked this morning about how um, you could get a whole bunch of different channels or different teams working in different ways, trying to deliver the same thing, which I guess is a, a coherent set of uh, Debian packages. Um, Popcorn, um, and, and these are the packages which, which we're, we're currently looking after in the KDE Extras team. Um, I updated this slide from Academy and, and the Popcorn numbers have sort of jumped by two or three uh, in sometimes five from, from where they were six months ago. Um, so it's a huge increase. Um, I guess for the, for, the, for the KDE Extras, the, I really draw the line at about the thousand mark. Um, anything below a thousand is, is really sort of a, a bunch of niche users. Um, but what I gain from this, uh, the actual numbers aren't that important. What I gain from this is the sort of relativities. Um, people really want media players. People really want um, sort of digital photo management and, and those sorts of things. Um, some of the other bits and pieces down the bottom, uh, things like Striggy. Um, is going to be a big part of KDE 4. Um, it's going to be really integral to the desktop, but as you can see, uh, very low adoption rates uh, at the moment because uh, I guess people don't realise its potential and, and people don't know what it's, gonna, what it's going to do for them. By comparison, uh, one of the other teams I, I, I work with is the, uh, the, the VoIP team. Um, and you can see up there the Speaks, uh, Codec and Libraries, uh, 40,000. Uh, LibC's got 46,000. Um, so for some reason everyone's got uh, Speak on their, on their, um, on their machines. Uh, down to Port Audio, PWLib and Opal, which are really the sort of the, the H323 stuff. Up in the sort of the, the 28, 30,000. And, and you can see in comparison to the, the KDE Extras, where, where we think 3,000 for Popcorn is a good number, in one of the other teams I'm dealing with, 40,000 is a good number, and, and it, it, I guess it does lend itself to a different style of maintenance and a different style of package maintenance. You, you get something wrong with Speaks, and uh, you're going to get 40,000 people turning around and, and being very upset. If we get something wrong with, with caffeine or, or something like that, um, the, the user community are going to be a little bit smaller, but not necessarily less vocal. Um, these are the, the members of the team, um, well some of the members of the team. Uh, I went back through the commit logs for the last two months and, and anybody who had done a commit for the last two months um, uh, has, has got their name up there. Um, Anna's, Anna's over there in the corner. I think I met Mario uh, the other night at the key signing um, and he joined the team as of yesterday I think. So 
Uh, there's there's a few people. Um, anyone else who's not up there, if I've left your name off, just yell. Um, but the the team is quite interesting, and 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 I'll talk about it when I go through the individual packages, um, because not everyone up there is is a develop, dev, Debian developer, um, and w some of them are upstream, um, some of them are just people who work with Ubuntu, um, and and I guess the bulk of them are Debian developers, and and that actually I, I think adds to the strength of the packaging and ensures that we do have consistent set of packages, um, and we're not just sort of Debian totally Debian focused. We are getting inputs from other ways and other areas, and where we are working with Upstream or we're working with Ubuntu, um, I think we get a better product as, as a result. Um, we've got a README um, in the top of our, our, our SVN tree, and, and really that's trying to document some ways of working and, and the way that we think the, the KDE Extras team should be working as a team. Um, it's interesting sort of comparing some of the different teams that I work in, how the, the, the ways of working with individual teams are completely different. In the, the Package Allegro team, which I work with, everybody just looks after their own packages. We aren't really a team. Um, in fact, the only thing we've got in common is we use a, a, a common SVN area. Um, in the KDE Extras team, we have tried to document a common way of contacts, a common set of IRC channels, uh, a common set of uh, mailing lists. Uh, we have tried to adopt a common uh, SVN layout, um, and that's, that's been working reasonably well. Uh, a common way of working through SVN build package um, and commits. And, and I'll admit, um, when I first transferred across to, to sort of Alioth and, and trying to use things like SVN build package, uh, it was a complete and utter nightmare. Um, it's not intuitive. Uh, there wasn't a lot of documentation around at the time, and it really took a fair bit of effort to work out what's going on. Um, how are you supposed to edit patches um, when you're not working in an export tree and all sorts of stuff like that? And, and it was a real effort to, to, to transfer over, but I think once, once the effort has been made and, and we've all transferred over to a common way of working, uh, the benefits and the strengths of team working have really come out. And we can have more than one person working on on, on the same package at the same time, which is really good. However, um, and it came up in the security discussion a couple of days ago, team maintenance isn't, isn't the answer to, to, to all ills. Um, certainly we get a lot of security, um, security bug reports and, and CVEs from the security team, mainly on the, on the VoIP side. And um, the, you'd, you'd think that being in a team with, with 10 or 20 people in the team that everybody would jump to and, and fix the issue straight away, but that's not really what happens. It's, it's really the, the specialists who uh, jump in. Um, versioning, um, we, we use an un, a, a special distribution um, called Unreleased, and, and, I'll, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. Um, but what we've, one of the things we've got set up is, is a thing called buildserver.net, uh, which is a bunch of build Ds, but it builds our current SVN archive um, across both the, 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 Debian, um, the Debian releases and, and the Ubuntu releases. And, and that's actually been really quite powerful for both uncovering bugs, but also being able to provide different versions of packages so people who want backported packages or want packages from, from other distributions can do it. And, and finally, we, we've got a mechanism in there for some, some automatic backport hooks. So we've got a directory layout, um, and, and the, 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 the package maintainer can stick in the package um, if they want to make changes to build depends to, to take account different distributions, they can do that. Uh, Buildserver.net. Um, I, I think this is, this is um, a good way to go, and, and I think this could potentially be picked up across the, the entirety of Debian. Um, it's not really a, a, a special thing for, for KDE Extras. It didn't actually come from KDE Extras. Killian Krauss is, is part of the uh, package VoIP team. Uh, he is a Debian maintainer, and he basically built a build D, um, which, which builds both Debian and, and Ubuntu packages uh, from the same SVN archive. Um, the, the package, I guess the releases up there are a little bit dated on both the Debian and the, and the Ubuntu sides, um, but that's, that's currently where we're at. Um, we need to, he needs to go in and update to, to, to pull Lenny and Gutsy and all those other bits and pieces. Um, but the concept's really good, and, and I think the concept's quite sound, and I think it's somewhere that Debian, as I said, De Debian does need to look at going for forward with. Um, because what, the, what this build server does is it, it takes the Debian directory from a, from a SVN archive. Um, we've, we've got a Debian rule script 
um, to pull the upstream source. Now that might be either pulling the upstream source directly um, through some, some scripts or I might just go to the Debian archive and pull the, the latest version of the debian.org.tar.gzip. Uh, um, and then it goes away and, and, and does its magic, um, does its build D magic, and, and produces the binaries. And, and as you can see down there, um, sticks it in an archive in a, in a format which is suitable to stick in your app sources line. Um, and a lot of people um, from, from various bits and pieces um, uh, drop us drop us email and the like and say, yep, we've, we've pulled this package or we've pulled this package. And effectively what these build Ds do is, is for every SVN commit we make, it will generate a new set of packages um, provided the dependencies can be met and, and there aren't build packages. Um, I think it runs on about a six hourly cycle, so it isn't actually picking up every single commit, um, sort of every, every commit over, over six hours and uh, quite powerful. And um, here's, here's one of the example outputs. Uh, this is the uh, Digicam package, um, a little bit dated. This is, this is building 8.2, but you can see up there, um, it's, it's, it's in sort of the standard build D layout um, with sort of installed and, and needs build and, and, and building or failed. Uh, fails on Sarge because it can't meet uh, some, of the, some of the, don't know why it fails on Sarge. Um, but that's the sort of interface you get, um, and, and we, can, we can dig into those logs and actually have a, have a good look at, at, at what's going on. Um, I'll just jump into some of the applications now and pull out some of the application-specific issues which we've seen in building the packages. Um, caffeine, uh, you saw, was at the top of the list in terms of Popcon, and um, the, 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 we did have some issues with the documentation because it, it, it came under the free documentation license. Um, but, but Debian was happy and, and we could consider them D, DFSG, DFSG um, because it didn't contain any unmodifiable parts. So we've, we've been able to pull that across. Um, great for digital TV. Um, I've been using it since I've been here in Edinburgh. Um, great digital TV in Edinburgh. Um, K Media Player or KM Player um, was originally only available th um, through uh, Christian uh, Marilat's um, Debian Multimedia Archive um, because it did use the non-free M player. And um, KM Player has, has been moved along a bit and it, it's now able to use both GStreamer and Zine, uh, which we do have Debian. So we were able to package this up and, uh, and stick it in the Debian Archive. Digicam, um, really good photo management, uh, works probably equally as well outside of KDE as it does in, inside KDE. Um, and, and we've had some real success here. Tom, Tom Albears, um, who's one of the upstreams from the, from the Digicam project, um, he's also got a few other projects, um, he regularly commits um, and HM Bonnet um, does some uh, Ubuntu packages and, and some other stuff for us, um, neither of which are, are Debian developers, so that's really good. Um, we've got 0.9.2 um, actually uploaded the final in, in experimental uh, due to some library dependencies and library transitions which are going through. Um, and, and the only comment, as it says down there, is, is what's happening with Digicam is upstream um, are spinning off a whole bunch of libraries, uh, libkdcraw, uh, libkxiv2 and, and libkexif. And I guess the state and the maturity of, of the library development isn't quite there. And um, we are having issues and, and almost education issues with, okay, well, we'd like to get version symbols in the libraries. We'd like to make SO, na SO name changes at, at sensible points rather than, than every release of, of the application. Um, and, and I think binary distributions like Debian and like uh, Ubuntu probably see the impact of, 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 I guess, immature library maintainership more than, than people who are just building things from source because we really do depend on it. Um, but, but through guys like Tom and HM, we've been working fairly successfully with Upstream and, and we're getting those libraries into, into a reasonable s sort of state. Um, Kyle. Um, Again, the documentation with Kyle um, is under the FDL, um, but, but we didn't really have any issues because uh, it doesn't contain any invariant sections. So we, we, we've got that in the archive. Um, 
KIPI plugins. Um, again, we've got Tom Albears uh, from Upstream who's working with us and, and regularly commits. Um, we've been pulling patches from Upstream in, into ours. Um, it does use some non-free components like MJPEG tools, um, which is a bit of a concern um, because we obviously don't ship it, um, but, but Debian Multimedia do. Um, but, and the other good thing about KIPI plugins is it works across um, a whole bunch of um, KDE applications, not just Digi Digicam. 'Twinkle. Um, it's a voice over IP package, but we, we maintain it in the, in the KDE Extras um, team, I think. Maybe not. Um, th there have been a few issues with it. Um, th there was a, a, an audio codec called ILBC, Internet Low Bandwidth Codec. Um, and, and what Upstream and Twinkle had done is they'd taken this, this, this ILBC library um, and included the source verbatim in the Twinkle library, uh, in, the, in the Twinkle code. Um, and also doing a bit of a code audit across some of the other packages we had in, 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 in the VoIP archive. Um, Asterix also included a copy of the ILBC source code and uh, uh, OpenH323 included a copy of the ILBC source code um, as well as a few others. Um, problem with that is, is the ILCB source code isn't, is non-free. Um, th there's all sorts of distribution issues with it. Um, it's got a really bizarre license where you have to notify them whenever you want to use it or whenever you want to change it, uh, which obviously fails the Debian free software guidelines. Uh, we worked quite well with Twinkle and uh, got ILCB removed um, and, and he now has a build time option um, where if people do wish to use ILBC um, then he's provided uh, or upstream for Twinkle have provided a build time option where if you have the ILCB libraries installed on your system um, you, you, Twinkle will recognise that. But that, that was quite a good case where working with upstream we, um, we, 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 we got a, a good result. Works well with the KDE address book, um, but we, we also would like to have a, a, a non-KDE dependent variant um, in the Debian archive. Um, we're currently building this with CDBS. Um, ideally, I'd like to be able to just sort of run CDBS twice on, a, on the package, um, once with the, with the address book integration in the configuration flag and a second time without um, the address book dependencies and the configuration and, and spit out two packages. Um, can't find a, a really straightforward way of doing this at the moment. Um, happy, happy to take suggestions. Codeine, um, another media player. Um, I, I quite like this. It has a very slick interface, as you can see up there. Uh, not a whole bunch of buttons and toolbars and all that sort of stuff. Uh, fairly small footprint. Um, we have rebadged this or, or, or re repackaged this as a, as a .df SG um, package, and that's because it has a really bizarre, redundant uh, FDL doctor that doesn't have anything in it, but we can't ship that one directory with the one file in it. So we strip that fo one file, well, that single file out, and, and then we can ship it in Deb Debian quite well. Um, KIAX is, a, is, is another VoIP um, user interface. Um, it only supports the IAX protocol, it doesn't support SIP. Um, so its uses are fairly specialised. Uh, Asterix does support um, IAX um, and, and a few um, uh, commercial VoIP providers provide IAX. Um, again, uh, this ILBC library was, was embedded in here, so, so we stripped it out, uh, repackaged the upstream tarball, uh, made it uh, DFSG. And um, George Danchov from, uh, where's he from? Bulgaria, um, did the original packaging. Um, he's not a Debian maintainer, but he, he needed the Debian packages, so we, we worked with him. He's a, he's a member of our Alioth team, so he has commit rights um, and, and works with us to, to, to keep this package up to date. So um, I'll just do a little bit of a talk about Debian QA. Um, this is not a dissimilar slide to, to one I put up at Academy last year. I know there's been a little bit of a flame fest about who's in front um, and who's upstream, Ubuntu or ourselves. Um, so for, for the packages we've been talking about, I've done a little bit of a comparison. 
Um, and really, uh, there's not much in it at all. Pe people are pretty neck and neck. Um, the, the two reds up there, um, KM player and Digicam, um, I think Guts, Gutsy's sort of one release behind. Um, but I'll, I'll give you an example. Asterix, the top line up there, um, that 1.4.5 release I did while I was up here at DebConf. And um, you can see uh, Gutsy's already got 1.4.5.1 one Ubuntu one, so so the 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 Ubuntu guys are, are are pretty quick off the mark and and pulling things across. Um, the changes in yellow are really just sort of minor, I guess, point releases. The, the, there does seem to be a little bit of reformatting in terms of change logs and 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 Ubuntu are adding in some really minor um, sort of control file um, upstream maintainer lines or something like that so it, it sort of seems as if each one's going to have a, a new sort of Ubuntu version on it even if there isn't any substantive change to the source. I don't know if anyone else has experienced that. Um, talking a little bit about Debian quality assurance, um, I, I presume everybody's seen this page. Um, from, from my perspective, well, probably not the KDE Extras team, but probably the, this pack page for packages you're interested in or packages you look after, um, I, I really find this, and I, I think the team finds this uh, quite invaluable because it, it really is a good switchboard. Um, it has access and links out to most of the places where you want to go, uh, links to the BTS, uh, links to the package tracking system, um, links to excuses and build D repositories and things like this. And, and I'd certainly say on a sort of a daily basis, I, I use the, this, this QA page uh, to check up on the status of packages, uh, work out what the, the, the to-do list is and, and, and try and sort of work out where, where, where the effort needs to be placed. Um, having the popcorn line in there um, is quite useful because that helps focus the priorities as, as to which are high priorities and, and, and which aren't high priorities. So, so I think from an infrastructure perspective, this is, this is a fantastic resource that, uh, that, that, that Debian does provide. Uh, one of the things I would like to see in here is, is perhaps a little bit better integration uh, with, with, with Ubuntu, for example. Um, I mean, you go into the package tracking system and you can get all the Ubuntu packages for, for the relevant package. Um, I don't see any reason why the, 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 the version fields here couldn't be tracking both uh, Ubuntu versions and, and Debian versions because sometimes there are patches in, in one or the other that, that, that are relevant and, uh, and, and quite useful. Um, just a little bit about the bug tracking system and, and synchronization with the, the, the KDE bug tracking system. Um, and really, uh, what I'm talking about is the BTS link facility. And you can see up there, um, a few of our bugs are, are sort of forwarded upstream to, to the relevant uh, KDE bug um, number or bug report. And um, like if you look at the second one down, caffeine, you, you can see there it's confirmed. It's been tagged as fixed upstream and it's, it's been tagged as, as upstream. And, and what the BTS link function does is it, it actually goes and, and has a look at upstream links. And when the upstream um, actually change the bug status or the upstream bug status to fix. Uh, that then comes back and, and provides a user tag in, into the Debian BTS. Uh, so we get an indication that, that the bug has been fixed upstream and, and potentially we can, we can pull forward that change. Uh, that particular bug um, is actually a, a, a Zion bug, so we, we need to move that bug across to Zion. Um, the system doesn't work as perfectly as it always should because if upstream marks a bug as invalid or resolved, um, because it's outside of their scope, it'll just appear in the BTS as being fixed, even if it isn't fixed. So we, we've had some issues where um, bugs haven't been resolved as easily as they could. A um, little bit of discussion about the interaction with the KDE and the, the, the Ubuntu developers. Um, I think, and, and the, the couple of examples I've used so far where we are working closely with Upstream or working closely with, with the Ubuntu teams, I, I think have yielded real results and real dividends. Um, but but I, I, I'm a little bit disappointed that, that the, the Ubuntu guys, when they make pass, pat, patches, all they've got to do is throw a line into the BTS, into our BTS, and say, hey, we've made these patches. Uh, would you consider them? Would you, th would you think about uh, applying them? Uh, I have on the odd occasion uh, received patches from Ubuntu, but, but it has really been uh, quite a rare event. And um, I, I think there could be a lot more work done, um, because at the end of the day, we're, we're all trying to 
package up fundamentally the same set of software in, in fundamentally the same, the, the same format. Um, with the KDE in integration, um, I, I think that's working really well. We've, we've got the synchronisation with, uh, with the BTS and, and we use that a fair bit. Um, and we are engaged with, with the sort of upstream developers. Um, and, and where we are engaged, I think it, I think it has real benefits for, for both parties. The upstream developers get access to real live users, real life problems um, that, that can only come about through a, a binary package distribution. Um, I guess traditionally y your average user of a binary package distribution is going to have a lower um, knowledge threshold than, than your average user of a, who goes out and rolls their own. So it, it, it is a different, a different community. And um, finally, my little advert advertisement. Um, I, I, I th really think the, the way we're using svn.debian.org and um, building the packages straight out of it in, into build servers is great. Um, I think it has real potential for just having one, one source and one, one version of the truth rather than a, a little archive over here and a little archive over there and, and, and nobody really knows um, where, where, where they're going and, and, and what's, what's, the, what's the true authoritative source. Um, anyone can have an account on Alioth, um, and um, I, guess, I guess most people here probably do, so I'm probably preaching to the converted. Um, but but uh, again, a, a, a bit of an advertisement for the KDE Extras team uh, to try and get some people, um, some other people who've got some interest, either Ubuntu users or, or upstream or, or whoever else, um, come, come and talk to us, and, and, and if you can, I say if you can spell SVN and, and Debian rules, uh, a bit tongue in cheek. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's, it's quite useful and it's quite easy if, if people know what they're talking about, uh, then, then we're probably quite happy to give them access. So that's all I have to say. Um, I guess I've galloped through it. There uh, haven't been any questions throughout, um, so I'll open the floor if anyone does have any questions or any observations. I guess the, the other thing I should mention is we've got a boff on, when's the boff, Anna? Saturday? What time? Nine. Nine. It can't be nine. Nine fifty. Ten. Yeah, something like that. Uh, nine thirty. Yeah. In Thirty minutes past nine on, on, on Saturday. Yeah. Um, I won't actually be there. I'm I'm, I'm heading off tomorrow. Um, but uh, some of the the, the, the KDE core team are going to be there and um, have a little bit more of a cosy discussion rather than sort of standing up here and talking. Anyway, you yeah. have a question. Hi, um, I'm just wondering what sort of packages you want to take up in, into your team. Are you just pretty much taking up everything that looks like KDE or are you strictly limiting yourself to what upstream KDE has in their extras? Um, yeah, no, it's not, it, it's not focused on just what upstream KDE considers to be their extras, um, although there is an upstream KDE extras archive, I guess. Um, really what we've tried to do with this is just sort of have a, a, a common area and a common way of working um, where people are building KDE or, or, or Qt uh, dependent packages um, because I guess there are similarities in, in, in how we interface with libraries and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, if you think you might be vaguely interested or, or fall into the sort of areas that we're working well, in. I could we're... unload a couple of packages onto you, no, I, I, I don't, but uh, I'm I sort of listened to you online downstairs, I might have sort of missed it, but what sort of assurances do you think you'll have that, you know, it's not just like another Java team where like people are just maintaining their own packages and having a big mailing list together and it's really not a team anymore at the end? Because ultimately I can't see like every developer being interested in all these packages. No, no, and I think that's a, that's a fair call too. I, d I don't think every developer is interested in, in every package. But where there is a common repository, I think sort of dropping packages through or orphaning packages or just dropping them through to the QA team because the, the, the current maintainer doesn't want to, to maintain them. Something like the KDE Extras team is, is, could be quite a useful staging ground. I guess there are a few of us who are specifically interested in a, in, in a few of the packages in there. Um, but if, if, if sort of other packages, rather than dropping through to the QA team and, and, and being orphaned, are looking for a home and are going to be relatively straightforward to maintain, mm. um, and if they are KDE packages, then fundamentally we should understand sort of how they work and, and, and how, the, how the build cycle works, then, then that could actually be quite a useful team uh, or quite a useful place to, uh, 
to, to, to drop them into. Um, I guess one of the things that we are going to be seeing over the little, next little while um, is there will be some packages transitioning, this is, this is upstream with KDE, there will be some packages or some applications transitioning from sort of standalone applications into, into the KDE core. Um, Striggy, for example, I think is going to be one that's definitely going to come out with, with, with KDE 4. Is that true? Yeah. Yep. Um, and Digicam, there's been a lot of talk upstream about whether Digicam should move into um, the, 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 the graphics archive and I think the Digicam guys have decided to, to keep themselves on a separate release cycle. But I could envisage where packages might move into the, into the KDE core and might move out of the KDE core. I guess it sort of depends on popularity more, more than anything else. That's sort of the other issue that came to my mind. Why didn't you, why why did you think you had to make a KDE extras team and not just sort of use the KDE team as it is? Um, well, we are actually sort of a, oh, we are almost a sub team within within the within the KDE team. Right. Um, we actually use the KDE team uh, SVN archive, and and we have our own our own. Um, branch off to one side within that. Um, but we do have our own mailing lists and, and really I guess... Okay, so it's that you're actually the same group on Alioth, you're just sort of a... Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're the same group on Alioth, but we do have two different mailing lists. Okay, so, I see. Okay. And there are some people who are more active in the, in the KDE core team right. and there are, more, there are some people like myself, for example, I'm more active in the KDE extras team and, and I really have little engagement with the, 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 the KDE core team. Okay. Hello. Um, your, your comments about Ubuntu are uh, not unfair at all. They're pretty accurate, I suspect. Um, I, I make Ubuntu for anybody who doesn't know. Um, and although I try to um, send patches upstream, I'm not. Firstly, I sometimes forget about it just because I'm a bit useless that way. And secondly, I'm not quite sure what the best format is for sending patches upstream. Um, and as for, um, well, having a diff in general, um, obviously the whole of Ubuntu is interested in having as small a diff as possible from, from Debian in, in every way. Uh, most of those are caused by um, us packaging things slightly before or at exactly the same time as Debian. And it's kind of hard to avoid that. For example, with Amarok, I don't know, is Amarok done by your team? No, Amarok's, and, and, and I did have Amarok up as an earlier one, it's, it's not maintained by the core Debian KDE team and it's not maintained by the KDE Extras team, uh, and Anna is part of a, yeah, but it is maintained by KDE people, but I think it's using uh, Bazaar on, on a people.debian.org account. Um, and, and I mean, the, the whole point, and, and it's been, I guess, a, a bit of a recurring theme through DevConf is, is we've got a whole bunch of teams and all the teams are using slightly different methods of, mm. of, of, achieve, of, of achieving the same thing. And I think that's one of the things I really admire about Ubuntu is, is because it has been set up sort of mid-cycle and hasn't grown up over the 10 or 15 years that, De that Debian's grown up, um, yet Ubuntu has been able to sort of implement a, a standard process and a standard workflow across, across, across the, 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 the team. Yeah. So our, yes, that example of um, Amarok, I just uploaded it from downstairs, but um, because it's just been released probably while you've been talking. Um, and it's hard to be able to coordinate that with Debian because it, we both, well, in Ubuntu we certainly want to be the first with every package that's out. And um, Debian packages may or may not want to do that, but it's hard to coordinate things while you're both um, racing towards the same deadline of it's going to be released in this hour and we want to have packages available for this hour. Um, and a lot of the, the, diffs, the sm smaller diffs of the packages that you said, the Ubuntu packages have a very tiny diff. What often causes that is we need a patch for uh, Rosetta support, which is the web translation thingy on Launchpad. Um, and that needs a small patch for every KDE package. Um, there's probably a number of packages that if that patch was taken upstream by Debian, wouldn't have to have any diff at all anymore. But I'm very reluctant to say to Debian, um, please take this Ubuntu specific patch because I think, you know, I'd, I'd word that would, there would be a backlash if I started sending up patches, requesting Debian to take patches, which are only for us. That, that particular 
case would actually not exist. Also. Sorry, that particular case would actually not exist if those packages were using CDBS, right? Which I understand was due. It's uh, patched the code, so it to the source code of the of the KDE package. Oh, it's oh, it's actually in the source code. Okay, then I must yeah. be confusing that with the language pack support. I think language pack was another one I was going to. Okay, that's different. Then. Okay, then. Um, yeah, uh, one, one of the things that I, I guess possibly Debian and Ubuntu could explore would be to have a common re um, repository, a common version control system for where we both keep our, our, our Debian directories. And if we want to create an Ubuntu branch and a Debian branch, um, I mean, do you think that would, that would be workable? If, I mean, if, if say, you, and I know the Ubuntu model's a bit different because uh, you're, not, you're not necessarily the one person who's uploading Amarok, but if you had commit rights to the, 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 the Debian um, Amarok um, archive, um, and then you could work together uh, as an Ubuntu and a, a Debian team, and if one releases ahead of the other, you could branch or fork, but then merge back at, at, at the end of the process seems to be what would be useful. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, um, that's possible. There's a couple of issues with that. Mostly um, in, the, in Ubuntu, in general, we only like to use BZR, and me in specific, because I'm an employee of Canonical, I can only use BZR, because Canonical puts in a lot of money into that, and if I go around using other revision control systems, then they get very upset. Um, and also, Subversion isn't very good at doing branching and merging stuff, so I would be reluctant to do any of the subversion just because it's not that good for it. Um, so if Devin moved to BZR, and it's interesting that um, Amarok is in BZR, I didn't know that, I'll take a look at that. Um, that, that certainly becomes a lot easier. Um, of course, I'm very reluctant to say to Debian that you must move to BZR just, just for the sake of Ubuntu. I think that might get quite a lot of backlash too. Yeah, the, the other patch that I don't really understand is, is like this one up here, um, where, where you, you, you change it from, the, you, you change the maintainer to a, a sort of a maintainer and a, what is it, an XSBC original maintainer. That and is done because Debian requests it for all Ubuntu packages. Oh, okay. So packages which are synced from Debian will have it automatically, automatically done by our build demons, but if there's any slight diff, then we have to make that change manually. Um, because Debian said, "Can you please not have okay?" So, the so, change if, them so if, the, if there weren't the other the other little diffs that were in this package, it wouldn't get that that, wouldn't that be necessary. maintainer field change. Okay, well, that, that's or quite it would happen automatically. It wouldn't be an yeah. issue anyway. Mm. Uh, and we also have a slightly different packaging style for um, build prep pack patches. Um, Debian puts in um, these large lib toolizing automate patches for. Um, um, for updating the KDE auto tools files into whatever Debian happens to be using. Um, and I, just for simplicity, on half of the packager, don't tend to bother making those into patches and just have them directly in the dot diff dot .gz. Mm. Um, and I, I must admit, I find the whole build prep voodoo. Right? That will go really, away in KDE4. Right? Yeah, really, really <laughs> quite confusing and, 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 and difficult to implement. So, yeah. And what was the other similar thing? Oh yes, Debian tends to take branch patches of the main KDE um, core packages, which um, I tend not to do just because if it does introduce bugs, then KDE developers get annoyed that, that we're not releasing standard KDE releases. Mm. I mean, I mean, uh, I know the cases where we've pulled bugs, for, well, we've pulled patches from upstream, it has been to fix specific bugs. Mm. Um, and, and I guess there is always the issue that, that whilst it's fixed one bug, it may reintroduce something. Um, I don't know if the core KDE team pull many, much from upstream. Core KDE tends to just do a whole branch pull for, the, for uploading KDE packages, yes? Sure. We can talk about it on Saturday more anyway. Okay, well, we're at the five minute window, so if there aren't any further questions, it uh, might be time to close up. Thank you for coming along.